Okay, guys, uh, yesterday we talked a little bit about um, the natural resources that were needed for industrialization. We talked about how human labor was the number one most important natural resource. From 1860 to 1880, our population more than doubled, uh, 30, 31 million to 75 million, and most of that was immigrants. You can see that by this graph how people were coming in at a, an enormous rate to find a better life for themselves. So the Cayman waves, the first wave was mostly from uh, the northern, northwestern part of Europe, Ireland, England, Germany, Scandinavia, other places. Um, and then the second wave was mostly eastern and southern Europe, a lot of Italians. Uh, Hungarian, Turkish, the uh, Eastern European Jews, Greek, and Romanian people. So you're going to have an assignment. Um, it's seven groups. I'm sorry, this should, I should have changed this. But basically you're going to make a set of Google Slides. You're going to tell me uh, each slide will be a different immigrant group, who they were, why they came, uh, where did they settle once they got here? And then your time period will be from 1840 to 1920, and you will have a graphic uh, that is appropriate for that time period for each slide. And this is going to be worth 50 points. Okay, so again, another graph. And you can see, my goodness, a uh, huge, huge, huge group coming in at that, uh, right after 1900. So the first group we're going to talk about are the Irish. And over 2 million Irishmen came in because of a horrible, horrible potato famine. Um, almost 1 million Irish starved because that was their crop not just to sell, but uh, as a staple for their, for the, their diet. Uh, as they came in, they settled in the cities, New York City, Boston, but Irish moved across the, the country. Remember, they worked on the Transcontinental Railroad. And with them, they brought lots of wonderful, wonderful culture, uh, St. Patrick's Day, and so forth. Um, they, we'll talk about how they got involved in government. As a matter of fact, John F. Kennedy's great-great-grandfather came during this potato famine. Also, from like 1845 to 55, over 1 million Germans came in. Now, they were having, uh, as well as some political difficulties, but they had crop failures. And the difference between the Germans and the Irish, the Germans had a little bit of money. The Germans, the Irish were very poor when they're coming in. They were starving. But the Germans, um, when they came in, they settled a lot in Wisconsin, uh, farming areas, Illinois, Iowa, uh, and, and they set up communities with kindergartens and bands and uh, a, a wonderful German culture. We have a German community in South Louisiana and in the Houston area. And one of their, their wonderful, wonderful events, of course, is Oktoberfest, which is coming up pretty quick. Along with the Germans, uh, the German Jews came in. Now, they were seeking religious freedom. There was already persecution against the Jews. And they settled mostly in the cities, New York City, Chicago, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Boston. And one of the reasons they were in the cities was um, there had been a... Uh, Edict, edict set down where Jews could not own property. So basically they had gone into trades. So you, these are your tailors, your bakers, your bankers, your jewelers. Um, and they are going to set up shop and uh, in the garment industry and so forth and uh, establish themselves in these communities. Okay, we've talked about the Chinese. Um, basically... They came in 1849 as well. They came from mining opportunities and the railroads and the mines. Uh, we've talked about how 6,000 Chinese worked on that Central Pacific Railroad. And, of course, many, many, many were involved in the mines as well. And it was abject poverty that brought them. Uh, they sent money back to their homeland. Uh, some of them even returned to their homeland, but, of course, most settled uh, big communities in San Francisco, 
and we actually have some Chinatowns in New York City and Chicago as well. But the big community is in San Francisco. Okay, the Russian and the Slavic countries. Um, Russians, they came in in the 1880s for economic freedom. These were mostly farmers again, and they were used to a cold climate. So we have a lot of the Russians that actually settled in the Dakotas um, up, up north. And they, they farmed and they had, had cattle. Uh, a lot of the Slavic people, now you're talking about, you know, Polish and uh, Lithuanian, Latvian, Estonian, uh, they also settled in the north and the midwest. Very large farming community. All right, the Italians. Over four million Italians are going to immigrate into the United States, and they again are looking for economic freedom, uh, searching for the promised land, you know, uh, opportunities. So they also settled in New York City, Boston, Chicago, but basically the Italian influence with four million people, they're going to move across the country and um, establish themselves in government, restaurateurs, uh, fishermen. So they are going to uh, be a wonderful addition to the American culture. Now Sicily is Italian, but they always consider themselves kind of a separate entity. Uh, they were overcrowded, you can see here with the red uh, area. This is Sicily, and uh, this is the Godfather, because this is, to be a true mafia person, you have to be from Sicily. Now you can see they're surrounded by water. Uh, some of them were fishermen. We have a large uh, Sicilian uh, population that immigrated into New Orleans, but also they were in the cities and coastal areas. Russian and Euro East European Jews. Now these were persecuted Jewish people. They were uh, they were poorer than the first group of German Jews that came in, and they were escaping persecution, poverty. And they also settled mostly in the cities. Many of them went to work for established uh, Jewish businesses and um, are great, great assets to our communities. But this is one of the reasons that they left Europe. It's called a pogrom. And pogroms, um, it's a Russian word actually for riot but it means organized massacres to kill or torment Jews. And sadly, this was carried out in Russia, in Poland. They would go into Jewish communities, Jewish villages, um, ransack them, sometimes, sometimes kill them. It was a very anti-Semitic uh, period of time. We always think of that in relationship to World War II and Hitler, but this was going on long before that. And where did they come in? They came into a place called Ellis Island. You can see the Statue of Liberty here. And Ellis Island was the East Coast, the European way to process the immigrant. From 1892 to 1954, over 16 million people, 1 million people a year, 5,000 people a day were processed at Ellis Island. And this is what they would see. So big boats would come in, and then ferry boats would bring the immigrants uh, on barges from the ships to the island to be processed. And as they were brought in, family groups were given numbers. So these are uh, new arrivals from Ireland. You can uh, always tell whether people were rich or poor by their luggage. And you can see in this case, uh, you've got a burlap bag large family, and this is everything they own to start a new life. These are Russian Jews. You can see from their coats, very, very poor people um, also uh, coming in during this time period to Ellis Island. This is a typical Italian family. Uh, look how tired the mama looks. And notice the numbers that they're wearing. So each family member would get a number, so little Giuseppe, if he got away from the family, they knew where to take him. It was family number 22. 
These folks probably had a little bit of money. You can see from the luggage, um, nice trunk here, and he's got a musical instrument in the doorway. I know these look a little creepy, but this is uh, uh, from the Netherlands, and uh, the baby, the mother-in-law, the wife, and the husband. These are Swedish girls on their way to Wisconsin, uh, probably farm areas, you know, Wisconsin cheese. They also uh, set up breweries known for making their beer, and those were German immigrants that it came in. Okay, this kind of looks children of the Cornish, but uh, this is a Russian family, and they are in the Dakota Territories. Where again, you can look at the luggage. This is just a large cloth bag, and she's carrying it on her head. Okay, again, you can see the luggage, and people would carry their own water or wine because um, it was a long trip and the water wasn't necessarily great on the ship. Okay, and where did they settle? They settled in things called ethnic enclaves. These were sections of the city in which uh, specific immigrant groups could find jobs, speak the language, get um, newspapers, and basically feel a little bit more at home in a brand new land.